Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared, and we're about to play The Shining. Let's take a look. I'll show you how. Feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. And for your convenience, I've added timestamps in the description to the different sections of the tutorial. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell below the video so you don't miss any of my latest content. In the Shining board game, players will be caretakers of the Overlook Hotel in the Rockies over the winter break. Just like in the movie, players must last several months of isolation without being possessed by the ghostly inhabitants of the hotel. Choose to play with one player corrupted from the beginning or not, but I highly recommend secretly assigning the corrupted role to someone from the start. The game plays best as a semi-cooperative game not knowing who to really trust. The corrupted player will secretly be subverting the goals of the other caretakers to slowly drive them mad or die. Much of the game's artwork is based on the movie's visuals with its own artistic impressions. In order for the caretakers to collectively win, they must explore the hotel and gain willpower to withstand the corrupting influence around them. Sometimes a player can become temporarily possessed and attempt to kill another player. If everyone survives to the end of the fourth month, you win. However, when playing with the corrupted player, everyone should try to discover who it is. If they don't, the corrupted player sabotages the snowcat and prevents their escape, forcing them to last a fifth month before help can arrive. So, how does it play? Let's start with setting it up. Place the board in the middle of the table. Shuffle the Shining cards together to form a face-down deck. Shuffle the event cards to create an event deck. Both can sit somewhere near the board. When playing with the corrupted player, count out one fewer caretaker roll cards than players and shuffle them with the one corrupted roll card. Deal these out to each player and keep your roll secret. Create a face-down pile of the willpower tokens. Count out 13 tokens per player to create the draw pool. Any extra tokens should return to the game box. If you have an opaque bag, you could use this to draw tokens from instead of creating a face down pile. Draw and place a random willpower token face up to the spaces shown under the ground floor locations. Do not place one in the dotted line circle in the Colorado room. If playing a four player game, also place one in the extra space in the office. And for a five player game, also place a third one in the kitchen. Place the red month tracking cube in the first space of the month tracker area. Place the black and white dice together near the board. Each player should choose a color pond B and place them all in the office to start. Give each player three health tokens. Randomly determine a first player and give them the room 237 room key, which is the first player marker. Gameplay always goes clockwise from the first player. From the shuffled shining deck, deal two cards from the bottom of the deck to each player. Don't look at these. With that, you're set up and ready to play. You'll play through four or potentially five months in the game. Each month may last two or three rounds. A single round consists of each player taking a turn in clockwise order, starting with the player holding the room 237 keychain. At the start of the round, the first player draws the topmost event card from the event deck and reads it aloud, then place it face up on the deck for everyone to see. The card's effects are active during the current round only. Each player takes a turn moving their pawn to new rooms to take actions and collect willpower tokens. Once everyone's taken their turns, discard the current event card face up to a discard pile and draw a new event card. If the newly drawn event card matches the color of the previous event card discarded, then this is the final round before the shining phase. You'll play at most three rounds in a row before you must proceed to the shining phase. On a player's turn, they must move to a new location. You may never stay where you are or end up in the same room where you started. Movement is allowed to adjacent rooms as connected via the white lines, which are hallways or stairwells, 
or by the elevator. Sometimes the event card will block a specific room in the hotel. If that's the case, you may not enter, move through, or end your turn in the blocked room. You may only move once during your turn, no matter how many rooms you travel through. Players are allowed one free movement to an adjacent room. Traveling any further will require you to discard a willpower token from the collective willpower pool for each added location. These are removed from the game, so spending them out of the pool permanently lowers the willpower tokens available to the group during the game. Should the pool be empty, you may still move extra rooms, but must lose a health token for each additional room instead. Upon ending your movement in a room, you should take the action provided by the room. Each one offers a unique action. Unless otherwise indicated, you must perform all the actions in the room you end in. When using the elevator, you must be careful. Since it's haunted, you must roll the white elevator die to use it. If you roll the elevator door's icon, you are wounded and must lose a health token. Any other result does nothing. The shining phase is triggered once two event cards come out that are the same color, or if it's the third round of a month. In turn order, players must resolve the shining cards dealt to them. Flip over both of your shining cards and add the numbers together. You must have at least that much in willpower to overcome the horrors of the hotel this month. The range shown on the backs of the cards give you an idea what value is on the front of them. Add up the numbers on your collected willpower tokens. Most have a number value printed on them. The whiskey token provides a value equal to the number of whiskey tokens you have. So if you have three whiskey tokens, there are nine points of willpower altogether. If your willpower total is equal to or greater than the shining total, you are still sane. If not, you become temporarily possessed by the Overlook Hotel. Having been possessed, move to the room location of the player's pawn closest to you. Ignore event cards that would block rooms, and do not discard willpower tokens to move more than one room. If you are already in a space with another player, don't move. When two or more players are equidistant, you may choose who to move to. Possessed players can't use the elevator. If you become possessed while in the hotel, you may not enter the hedge maze. If in the hedge maze, you may not move into the hotel. After moving to another player's pawn, the possessed player rolls the white and black dice together. A blood splatter result on the black die removes one health token from the attacked player. The white die shows various weapons. If rolling a weapon on the die that the possessed player has collected, then they lose another health token. The weapons are printed on some willpower tokens. Additionally, if the willpower pool is empty, any attacked players will automatically lose one health token in addition to any from the dice. Each player must resolve the shining in turn order, comparing their willpower to their flipped over shining cards. It's possible that every player becomes possessed or none. After each player finishes the shining phase, proceed to cleaning up for the next month. Everyone discards their shining cards to a discard pile and removes their collected willpower tokens from the game. Place all the discarded event cards on the bottom of the event deck. Pass the first player keychain to the next player clockwise. They'll be the first player during the next month. Any empty willpower spaces on the ground floor should be refilled from the willpower supply pool. Only cover the spaces for your player count. Any unclaimed tokens still on their spaces will stay there. Deal each player two new face down shining cards from the bottom of the deck. Don't look at these until the next shining phase. Move the month tracking cube forward to the next month. If it's the end of the fourth month, check to see if you've won. Each room has special actions as printed on them. When ending your move in the room, you must do all the actions shown. In the kitchen, you take one willpower token from the available tokens below the room. You may choose to move another player's pawn to one adjacent room. That player does not get to do the room's action. You are allowed to do this part of the action even if there were no willpower tokens to pick up. In the office, you must take the willpower token with the lowest value from its location. Next, look at the top card of the event deck. You may choose to keep it on top or put it on the bottom of the deck. You may still do this action if there are no willpower tokens. While playing with a corrupted player, the knowledge gained is secret, so you may not show the event card to anyone. You may always say whatever you want, whether true or false, but since there may be a traitor, you can't show the card to anyone. In room 237, you should draw two willpower tokens randomly from the pool. Look at both, and you are allowed to keep any weapons. The rest are returned to the pool face down. When playing with a corrupted player, Make sure you don't show anyone what the tokens are until you decide which ones to keep. At the caretaker's apartment, draw two willpower tokens from the pool and look at them both. 
Choose one of these to give to any player or to keep for yourself. The other token will be discarded face down. Keep the token information secret when a corrupted player is in the game. When discarding the token, don't let anyone see what it was. At the Colorado Room, first draw a new willpower token from the pool and put it face up in the dotted circle space. Then you may take any one token from this location. In the Gold Room, you must take the willpower token with the highest value among the ones here. The Hedge Maze is a space you can go to, but it doesn't have an action to take there. Players in the maze can only attack other players in the Hedge Maze. During the Shining phase, no players may move to or from the Hedge Maze. When playing with a corrupted player, one of the collective actions you may take is to make an accusation. Before the end of the fourth month, any player may make an accusation against someone. However, you should be careful. Only one accusation can be made in the whole game, no matter who made it. The corrupted player is not allowed to make an accusation, but may act like they might do one to try to trick the others. Any time during a player's turn, they may choose to accuse someone of being corrupted. First, flip over your roll card to show you are a caretaker. Then, accuse a player of being corrupted. They must turn their roll card face up to show who they are. If the accusation is correct and they are the corrupted player, a few gameplay changes happen. First, all players receive plus one to their willpower totals during the shining phase for the rest of the game. The corrupted player can no longer be targeted in an attack by a possessed caretaker. The corrupted player may also not move more than one location per turn. The corrupted player still has a chance at winning if any caretaker dies. If the accusation is wrong, the corrupted player remains hidden. All players must add one to their shining totals for the rest of the game. If the corrupted player loses their final health token, they must immediately reveal their roll card. They continue playing the game as if the accusation was correct. They'll still gain shining cards, move to locations, and collect willpower. Should the corrupted be falsely accused and then the real one loses their final health token, do not apply any of the modifiers to shining cards or willpower totals. There's a lot of ways to lose the game and only a few to win. Should any caretaker lose all their health tokens, they die and the caretakers lose. At the end of the shining phase of the fourth month, the caretakers win if they've survived. While playing with the corrupted player, there are other conditions for winning and losing. First, of course, if any caretaker dies, only the corrupted player wins. At the end of the fourth shining phase with a corrupted player, if the corrupted player was successfully revealed, the caretakers win the game. They'll take the snowcat and escape the overlook. However, if the corrupted player has not yet been revealed, he sabotages the snowcat, forcing the caretakers to survive an extra month in the overlook. Move the month tracker cube forward to the fifth month. By surviving to the end of the fifth month, they win the game. If any one of them dies, the corrupted player wins. The rulebook includes some strategy tips if you are the corrupted player. Check the last section on page 10. For example, when doing the action in room 237, they can choose to return weapon tokens to the pool if they want to make it harder for the caretakers. The corrupted player could intentionally try to get a low willpower score to force an attack on players, or go the other route of taking the best tokens so the others end up fighting themselves in the shining phase. The corrupted player may try to manipulate the event deck or even lie about tokens or event cards they see. Any suspicion he can cast on others through bluffing or lying will help create chaos. Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. Check the video description for links to Top Shelf Gamer for token upgrades, Cloud Puncher Games for board game shelving, and Mr. Meeple t-shirts for cool board gaming shirts. The Meeple Mentor channel is now part of the board game community, The Gateway Network, made up of great upcoming board game content creators. Originally founded by the Gamecasters podcast, the network includes Instagrammers, podcasters, YouTubers, artists, and even a board gamer themed comedy series. Click the link in the video's description or head over to the Gateway Network's Instagram to find great new content. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Like and subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. Stick around to watch another Learn to Play video. And remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.